Hello. Hey, everybody. So wonderful to see you here in the live chat. Welcome. Welcome to the members as well. Thank you very much for being here. If you're on an iPhone and you want to become a member, everybody else should be able to see a join button, but go ahead into the description of this video and you will find a link for iPhone users to get a membership. Thank you for being here. Big thank you to my mods today. Dip Me and Glitter is here. Nancy's here helping out and my Tony as well, which is great because we have a lot to cover. I'm Natalie. Hold on. I was suddenly muted. Weird, weird, weird. We're going to start over. <laughs> All right. Nancy, can you hear me okay? I think I'm back on here. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Fabulous. All right. Okay, Nancy can. Some somehow, yeah, that's right, Don Holt. Knock it off, Osa. <laughs> Let's start from the top. Then I'm just gonna edit that part out. Welcome everybody. I'm Natalie. This is Scientology Life After a Cult, where we recap the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing because you guys email me, Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com, and let me know what you want to talk about, what is out there, what's happening in terms of Scientology news. I also talk about my 35 years in Scientology, growing up in Scientology and leaving with three generations of my family. You're also going to catch me doing interviews and collaborations with other people in this space. So when you hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell too so you know when that's happening because today later on at 12 p.m central time i'm going to be sitting down with oh no nora and we are going to be focused in on one of the topics that we're going to touch on today you guys we have we, we've got protest news to cover including a very disturbing cry for help i guess is the best way to describe it we're going to look at that we're going to talk about it we're going to touch on the news that down the rabbit hole broke yesterday that is just blowing the minds of everyone, including myself. And like I said, get into some other protest news as well. So as you come in, please be sure to hit that like button. Help us get those notifications out. Let people know what we're doing and that we are here. Let's get into, let's see. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. First thing we're going to do, actually, we're going to take a look at, we we talk a lot about here on SPTV about the inappropriateness of children in Scientology, how children cannot consent to auditing, whether receiving it or even delivering it and the issues with that. We're going to take a look at a channel, Eyes to See 33, who was sharing some children, Scientology children security checking questions. So this is interrogations for children, specifically ages six to 12. So I guess, I don't know, L. Ron Hubbard broke it down to some degree. This is for the six to 12 year olds. We're just going to look at a few of these because it really reminds us how messed up this human trafficking cult is and why we need to continue to get the word out about it. Check this out. Sick. These are the questions that would be asked of a six to 12 year old child in Scientology as part of their security checking, their interrogations. Ill or hurt yourself to make somebody sorry. Yeah, did you ever fall or hurt yourself to make somebody sorry? Odd question, but okay. Have you ever wanted something very much but never told anybody about it? Have you ever gotten yourself dirty on purpose? Number eight. Have you ever gotten yourself dirty on purpose? Apparently, is this some kind of crime or issue in Scientology that I'm not aware of? Because you know what? Uh, I'm pretty sure kids get dirty on purpose. It's not like they're trying to avoid it. And it sounds like it's something that children should do. So do you guys see this? How, again, it's separating out children not being children you are big beings in little bodies. So why would you be out there intentionally getting yourself dirty? And this again can start with a child as young as six. Have you ever refused to eat just to worry someone? Nine. Have you ever remembered something about yourself and not told anybody because you thought they wouldn't believe you or be angry at you? Have you ever refused to obey an order from someone you should obey? Have you ever refused to obey an order from someone you should obey? We got to train those kids early on. That is the thought process in Scientology and getting people in alignment with that and that narrative and that agenda. Ask anybody who grew up in Scientology. 
<clears throat> have you ever told another child something that wasn't true just to frighten or upset him? Again, have you ever told another child something that wasn't true just to frighten or upset him? I would say that most kids did. Maybe you told ghost stories by the campfire, but in Scientology, that would be spreading. That would be spreading in theta, in theta, in theta, in turbulated theta. In Scientology, that's like bad news, harshing somebody's vibe. Ironic when you think about it, because Scientology is one, one harshing of the vibe after another. <laughs> when you think about it. So for them to kind of like go at kids like, hey, don't be bringing this bad news about you being hurt and dirty to your parents. That's interfering with what we're trying to do here in Scientology. It's just ridiculous. Hey, Lara FM. Girl, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know. All right, let's take a look at something else I want you guys to be aware of. Link down below to all the videos that we're talking about. Jeffrey Augustine over at the Scientology Money Project did a video showing us how to go in and file a complaint with the IRS about Scientology and the ways they violate their tax exempt status. What? Yes, apparently we can all do this from the comforts of our home. So we're going to look at a little snippet of this video, but when you get a chance later, head over, look at the whole thing. He's got links in his video to where you need to go and what you need to do. But let's take a little peek. It basically is IRS complaint uh, process. First of all, because the Church of Scientology is uh, an exempt organization, right? that means ex it's exempt from paying taxes. The There's the regular IRS that collects income taxes, and then there's the exempt organizations. That's a division of the United States Internal Revenue Service. IRS exempt organizations. And so what you're gonna do uh, they tell you on their website, I'm going to put, put this in the show links. Basically, if a tax exempt entity, such as the cult of Scientology, uh, is violating uh, public policy, you can file using a form 13909. And this gives you the information on this link. You can email it. How great is that? You can email it. So link down below to his full video and with his, within his video description will be the links that you need in order to do this and find out what exactly it is that they're violating. Because we can talk about it in general terms, but let's just go to the IRS website and find out and look and see and then file some complaints about it. It is a place to start. So I'm really glad that he did, that he went ahead and he did that video. Now let's just look at something a little bit more lighthearted to get a little bit of a brain scrub before we get into even more Scientology shenanigans. Uh, antics of a mama squirrel is we talk about protest art that is being inspired from the different protests. We've got puppets, we've got skits, we've got mini streets, we've got mini streets, body Satan over in Clearwater. And now we have another, we're going to take a little look at this. This is <laughs> so many better restaurants to support than La Poubelle. And this is from antics of a mama squirrel. Let's take a look. Sucko, I've been wondering something. Why would anyone want to eat out of a garbage can, especially one owned by Francoise Coster? I mean, she's the lady that harassed the victims of Danny Masterson. I'm still trying to figure that one out, D. I mean, there are so many good restaurants in LA to try out. Much better restaurants than La Poubelle. Sure are. I mean, just last week, a new one went in down the street that's much better than La Poubelle. It was also called Something Bell. Something Bell? Like La Poubelle? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you mean Harold and Bells? Or Bell's Beach House in Venice Beach? Those are both great restaurants, but they aren't new, D. No, it's that new one. It's something bell. It has the big bell on the sign. Oh, do you mean that Mexican one? Yes. Oh, yes, that's it. Oh, I remember now. Taco Bell. <laughs> I think it's really cute. Really cute. Really cute. Really cute. Yep. DOA socks that were stolen and kept by the LAPD for how long? Over a month, finally released to him recently, along with the cord to his computer and his mouse, but not the computer or the phone, because that's not weird. 
<laughs> but yes, Taco Bell. We're going to go over to Big, Big Blue yesterday. Speaking of DOA, they were having a barbecue, like a, a, a family dinner right off of L. Ron Hubbard Way, barbecuing, sharing food, a whole community cookout. It was fantastic. And also while there, is this where I think I heard Mindy Willens, who's one of the protesters and live streamers here on Facebook, uh, YouTube, listen to me here on Facebook, here on YouTube. And she has a little jingle that she made up to go along with the SPTV Foundation, the new SPTV Foundation created to help people recover from leaving Scientology. You can learn more at sptvfoundation.org. Let's take a look at this. 727-266-5797, sptvfoundation.org. <laughs> it's a short little ditty, but I like it. I like it. I thought it was cute. Oh, so cute. I love their creativity about it. And it's a great way to remember the number. People have come up with some different ways, too, of doing letters for the numbers and all that. I'm sure that's all a work in progress. Whatever you got to do to get the message out, get it out. I love it. We can always count on Mindy Willens for that creativity. You know who else is creative? Liz Gale. People, Liz Gale went off. She clapped back so hard at Stephanie Hutchinson. For those that don't know, I think although you guys probably all know, Stephanie Hutchinson is a board member of the Aftermath Foundation. And she wrote a blog article going at Aaron at growing up in Scientology. But also, it's, it's I couldn't figure out like what was it more for to to go at and attack Aaron personally or to share the, the works that apostate Alex was doing. I don't think it helped him either just because the context of it all was just so negative. Um, but in the process of that, there's just been more things that come has come up, has come up and has come out. And uh, Liz had some things to say about it. So we are going to take a little look at a snippet of her video, which is basically don't tell us how to be Stephanie. Uh, link to the full video down below. You should definitely check it out. We're just going to look at a small piece of it. The culture is defined by people who have experienced it and now are getting to express themselves in a free and safe and uncult environment. And you're not the hall monitor here. Okay. You're not our hall monitor. You don't get to tell us what we can say, how we can dress, how we can express ourselves, what information we can share or anything like that, because you know what that is? That's culty. That's culty. You, Stephanie, don't get to reinforce stereotypes. They're not your stereotypes to define. Back off. So if you wanna be a part of the solution, sure, go ahead and educate others, but don't tell us, us who lived it, us who were there, how to express ourselves. It is a good one. It's not very long. You can see the whole thing linked down below, but definitely a, cl a clap back at Stephanie Hutchinson, who seemed to want to position herself as a go-between between, between members of the ex-Scientology community and all of our never-end friends, which in my opinion, that is not necessary because we have direct ways of communicating with each other. And we, we have, we're a whole community. There's not a faction here and a faction there. Never in people, people never in Scientology, but all in on bringing down the cult. We're all part of the same community. We're all part of the community of exposing Scientology. There's no need for a go-between or translator in there or someone, I mean, she's right to say, we can all, you can all have opinions. She can also have an opinion. She cannot like Aaron or whoever for that matter. But, uh, you know, at least be honest about it, that that's what you're doing and that's what it is. And don't try to slip it in as something that is part of exposing Scientology. <laughs> exactly, Mama D63. We are one. We're a community. And a community doesn't always agree on everything either. And you know what? That is okay. We can even talk about it. And it doesn't mean that the world is ending or things aren't still going to get done. I just know that as someone who, you know, coming from that that community of having grown up in Scientology, when you're never allowed to talk about it or express yourself where that is suppressed so heavily, when you finally get to, I would agree that it's like, however you're going to do that, however you're going to express it. If you want to wear a funny costume and go out and protest Scientology, then so be it. You do you, boo. You do you. <laughs> 
All right. So let's move over to L. Ron Hubbard Way over at the Blue Buildings. DOA was out there. He had he did a whole bunch of flyers sharing the SPD, SPTV Foundation information, phone number, and how people who need help recovering from leaving Scientology, especially people leaving the Sea Org who often do so with no bank account, no driver's license, and no real support on the outside, was sharing that information. And a gentleman came by. You don't see it, but you can hear the conversation. It was just heartwarming because DOA was able to share information with him because this man had been kicked out. Banished by Scientology, which is basically how outside of Scientology is explained that you were declared a suppressive person. There you go. Thank you. I got a nice thing. And then these are former Scientologists. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. He was banished from the church. Is that what he said? Yeah. That guy just that guy just asked for pamphlets and said he was banished from the church. Nice. Nice, man. One. Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. That's one. a W, yo. There's a one. Yeah. Awesome, man. That Good makes that him. makes me that was worth all day today. Good for him. That I gave, like look, I got goosebumps. <laughs> on my, I got goosebumps, man. <laughs> Look at those goosebumps. <laughs> the goosebumps are cute too. It's just, I love how excited that he got to be able to help somebody like that. And hopefully he reaches out and learns more about the community that's out here to support people who are leaving or left Scientology. You're so isolated and led to believe that you're leaving everything, your family, your friends, your community, but there is life after a cult. Oh, speaking of, check this out. Life after a cult. <laughs> it is in the merch shop. <laughs> but there is. There's life after a cult. That's the whole thing. There's community out here. Sometimes it might be people just need, like I know when I was leaving Scientology, it was that community outside of other people who left to be able to talk to them and share stories and realize that I was not the only one seeing what I saw and knowing what I know. It's, there's so much power to that. It's so helpful. So I love that he got to experience that. Now, Confident Chris was out in LA and guess who he found? He came across somebody, uh, Grandpa Tech, taking down those DOA flyers about Scientology and the SPTV Foundation. Chris busted the guy and... Uh, not to say went after him, but did 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 go did go after him. The guy knew that he was caught and he was in trouble. And it it's funny and part of what um, warms my heart about it at the same time is how excited Chris was and just just it, and the, his chat helped him out too to find this guy who was out there taking down these posters. But check it out. This is confident Chris. <laughs> Faster than you. <laughs> faster than you. I'm faster than you. <laughs> oh, jeez. That was <laughs> we got him good, right, chat? We got him good, right, chat? You know, you're out there, you think you're just going to go out and pull down some posters sharing how people can get help leaving Scientology and you're just going to be about your business. No. Protesters are everywhere and they're watching and they're live streaming and you're being caught caught on camera. <laughs> pulling down those posters. All right, let's go back to the barbecue that was happening in the evening outside L. Ron Hubbard Way, which was just a great community gathering. Let's take a little peek. That's it. I was like, here we go. I got to leave. Get to work, Cam. You're not getting paid. <laughs> it's just so great seeing people together you got la cam there off in the distance jacob harkey that's jessica palmadessa 
just coming together and breaking bread. And I'm so impressed that DOA set that whole thing up complete with the charcoal barbecue. I mean, making hamburgers and hot dogs and all that. I just love it. I love it so much. <laughs> hey, Liz Ferris, great to see you there. And thank you. Thank you for the well wishes. All right, let's, this, this, this whole help thing in the window is disturbing on multiple fronts. Let's walk through it. Let's take a look first where we're going to take a look at a clip on Jessica Palmades' stream where she walks up to the Catalina side of the Scientology Sea Org buildings and they see something up in the window. Check this out. We're going to look at a few clips from this. She said that earlier the window said help in tape and there was someone scrubbing it down, scrubbing it down. I know I'm, I'm literally going to go tell DOA right now. But I don't even know, like, wh what do you say? Because really all you can see now is an H. No, they, they, they pulled off the tape, guys. They pulled off the tape. He was, like, scraping it. Yeah. I mean, the so what it sounds like is even a neighbor of the building saw help in the window and someone scraping it off. So what, what, whether it was put on with paint, whatever was done, at the end of the day, somebody put help on the window inside a Scientology Sea Org building. A neighbor witnessed it being scrubbed off. The live streamers are catching it. We're going to take a look at what happened when the LAPD came, which they, who they contacted. So let's go jump over to that and see what happens when the police arrive. And this is from Confident Chris's stream. Oh, yeah. So uh, just letting you know that over on that side window, I'd show you where. Someone just put help with tape all the way. Uh, Catalina. 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 Yeah, on Catalina right here. Catalina, One block. Like, just in the middle of the street. Uh, In the middle of Catalina right here. Going that way? Yeah. 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 There's side? a one-way street. Side? East, side? Uh, east, side. east side. East side. Yeah, we could go there. Uh, it's like second floor. It's like a window like this. Here's Danny. Uh, right after the, right after the moving fan, uh, six windows that left, like about five, six windows left. We'll go there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they end up going around the building, which I think we have another clip of that when the police go around the building. So they're right where the sign is. And remember, part of it was scraped off, but it was the full words help were seen earlier. And then somebody was seen scraping it off. And this is uh, what happens when the cops pulled up to that side of the building. You see that? Yeah, that's a fence right here. Right up there. They said a neighbor already uh, saw them scraping it. Bring the FBI. They said they'll talk to security. Oh, my God. They didn't do anything that we're aware of, that we could see. And going and contacting security, they're likely the ones holding the person there. When I wanted to leave the C organization, I was put under what is called security watch, which means somebody is with me 24-7 to make sure I don't run off. And do you know where that was? That was in, in what's called PAC security. It was in security. It was with security. Those are the people who assign other people to watch you and make sure you don't leave. So going to them is like going to people who are holding people there. They're not going to say, they're not going to tell the truth. 
that person has probably already been moved the second that it was seen and being scraped off. Now, whoever did the crappy job of scraping it off, and thank goodness they did a crappy job, is probably also going to get in trouble as well. It, it's it's just, it's really disturbing. It's very disturbing. Let's take a look. Even Tori, Tori Magoo 44, she was there earlier. She went live later and she had something to say about it. Let's take a look. So these live streamers, it's just, it's not going to work. You know, you have to realize you guys have to get it together because whatever you've been doing, it's not working. I've told you that since the nineties, when I was in, I said, you are creating your own enemies, but now you really are. And this kind of stuff, you know, it's tricky. If it's a joke, it's not funny. If it's not a joke, I mean, I think either way, we're probably going to go to the media and talk to them because it isn't funny to do that. And I got to tell you, I cannot imagine, especially my ex org members who are here in the chat, or if you're watching this on the replay, tell me in the comments on in what world would any Sea org member think that that was funny and do that? There is no scenario because they know, we know exactly what would happen to us if we did that. If you think you were being held before, you're going to be held in a whole nother level and maybe even a, a different place. It wastes the police's energy. There's four police cars that are there now at, L at LA Org in their parking lot. The help sign was all the way at the other end by Fountain, but the guy apparently went there, didn't go in, but kind of swung around and then left. And then these other four cop cars came. So I don't know exactly what's happening, but you can always check on Jessica Palmadessa and she's there live. He's <laughs> Tori's so cute. Tori's so cute. Disturbing topic, but gosh, she's just so, I just love her. Uh, and you saw Ono oh Nora too saying, this is not something that a Sea Org member would joke about. This is not funny for them. This is not something, there's no joking <laughs> in Scientology and the Sea Organization. You don't do it. L. Ron Hubbard wrote a policy called Jokers and Degraders. You can tell by the title, they don't, they're, they're not signing off on that. They don't think it's funny. I got in trouble. I know this is going to shock you guys, but I got in a lot of trouble at different times for my sense of humor in Scientology. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> I know that's blowing your mind and that's probably a lot to recover from right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's going to, there are people who are reporting this and finding where else can it be reported and there just needs to be demands that it is looked into and investigated because even a neighbor saw it. So this isn't just even people who are live streaming and protesting who saw it. It was a neighbor who originally was like, the whole word help was there and then somebody was scraping it off. So tell me in the chat, tell me in the comments if you're catching this on the replay, what do you think? What do you think that's about? I mean, I know what I think about it, but it wouldn't be the first time either that a Sea Org member didn't try something very desperate to find a way out, to get out. I've known the searing members who have, who've gone to extreme self-harm measures just to get out, even if it meant getting out via an ambulance just to get out. So it, it's a, it's a real thing and it's disturbing. We're going to keep an eye on that and see what else we can find out about it. Another thing that I found to be disturbing and hilarious at the same time was over at La Poubelle. Over at La Poubelle, there's this narrative inside La Poubelle that the protesters and live streamers are working for Scientology, that they're somehow pro-Scientology. I don't know how this rumor is getting carried around in there, but it is. And there is a young lady that explained it to, um, I know uh, Zachary Ellison was there. This is Mindy Willen's stream, but check this out. Every day in court. So that owner of the Poubelle yes, is in Francois bed Coster. with that's why we're out here volunteering our time. Interesting. I was informed that the people here were representing Scientology. By who? By people inside. They said that we Did you hear that? People inside are saying that you guys are all with Scientology that your offices are in Scientology that you're representing Scientology. <laughs> okay. I don't even know like how th those dots would be connected or that narrative would come up, but I don't, I don't think that it's being 
promoted by Scientology because this doesn't make Scientology look worse. I mean, better. It doesn't make them look better to say, oh, the protesters are with Scientology. It makes it look worse. It's actually worse for Scientology that people out there think that. Oh, it's so ridiculous. And so we'll see. Maybe she'll go in. Maybe she'll go in and tell people like, hey, turns out they're not with Scientology. They're actually against Scientology. I hope she goes in there and just spreads the word, interrupts the whole dinner. Excuse me. Excuse me. Patrons, the protesters are not with Scientology. Turns out <laughs> it's just ridiculous. All right, let's go to Chicago where we're going to take a look. There was uh, multiple police officers showed up. Cops called, but they could not get into the building. Chicago likes to lock their doors like that, even when, you know, it's like they know police are coming yet somehow. Let's just lock the door. Uh, Windy City Thetan Watch. He was out there. Let's take a look at this in Chicago. You think if they called you to do their work, they'd leave the door open for you, huh? Hey, Osa, can you let the officers in? That was my favorite part. Osa, let the officers in. Let them in. Can I have your name and badge number? Name and badge number? I'm Batista, and then it's 4979. Batista, 4979. And you, sir? Via 10935. Via 10935. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. More, please. Can I ask the purpose of the call? So they get let in. They end up leaving. Nothing really seems to happen. Same old, same old. That is in Chicago. And there, if you go to Windy City Thetan Watch, if you go to his channel, he also has some information on what the actual call was, which is just, again, next level, next level ridiculous on what it was. But he's got great info on his channel. Link down below. Be sure to check it out. Uh, he's out there doing some great work, sharing a lot of videos. There's just like... Since day one, it's just been weird what's been happening in Chicago with Scientology. It's, it's been different from other organizations that they've opened and the way they've done it. There's, it's just given me, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but it's like in Chicago, some things are happening the way that they're renting space for the staff. I don't know if they're staff members or Sea Org members. And we're hearing that they're putting eight, nine people in a studio. It's like, when is that being done? Back, back in my day. Back in my day in the cult, when we were in the cult, we had to pay for our own housing. I mean, they may, have, may be having to pay for it anyways, and they've just got that many people in there. Just weird, but got to keep an eye. Got to keep an eye on Chicago. Let's jump over to Austin. There is a live streamer, protester, new to me, Hitzel, protesting in Austin, came upon what looked like some... Are they selling Dianetics books? I think that that's an e-meter there that I can see, but they're definitely out there recruiting. Remember, these organizations, these new buildings and all that, they had their teams fire back, fire back to Scientology. And one of their number one, the biggest thing on their agenda is going to be recruitment. Why? Because Scientology can't get people into Scientology. <gasps> Why? <laughs> well, the protests are definitely not helping them. Neither is the fact that there are more people on social media, on every platform, sharing about the abuses and that Scientology is a human trafficking cult than there are actual Scientologists. Definitely Scientologists not saying anything good about it. I mean, unless you count Tampa Brad. <laughs> and let's be honest, that dude's not doing them any favors either. But he's the only Scientologist I'm aware of that is on YouTube and doing that. So let's let's take a look here at this uh, at what was happening over in Austin. Scientology is a cult. Interesting. 
So they've got security out there. What is your, uh, what's the purpose of your guys' action here? What do you guys, uh, what's your goal? Interesting. They're out there. They got the table set up with the red tablecloth. That usually means they are selling Dianetics books. E-meter means they're usually doing what they call a pinch test in Scientology, where you hold on to the cans while you're hooked up to the E-meter and you get pinched and you're supposed to watch the dial and the needle moves a certain way. And then you're told to recall the moment of the pinch. And then the needle dial moves a certain way, which is supposed to be similar to the way it moved before to show you that when you recall those moments of pain and unconsciousness, it's registered on the e-meter. They call it a pinch test. They call it a stress test. They often call it a stress test because it's like, let us test your stress so we can find out, get information out of you about how stressed out you are, find your vulnerabilities, and then tell you you need to buy this Dianetics book. You need to join Scientology. You need to watch these films. You need to do this Scientology auditing, Dianetics, whatever it is, whatever the case may be. But that's happening. Okay, Kansas City. Let's go to Kansas City. Someone, uh, a bunch of you sent me a clip of a bunch of kids going into the Kansas City org that really made me go, what the heck is that? Like, what are we looking at? Why? What's happening? Who are these children? Why are they all going into the Scientology organization? Are these the children of staff members? Is Scientology doing some kind of, uh, their applied scholastics, their front group, some kind of tutoring? It's one of many ways that Scientology tries to gain acceptance out in different communities is through their front groups. But it's just weird. It's weird, you guys. It's so weird. This is from uh, Auditing Scientology. And there's Matt. I mean, who, whose kids are these? What's up with the van? What's happening? And, and, then, and then they're off. I just don't know what, what scenario, what's happening. First thing that comes to mind is this, like I was saying, tutoring through applied scholastics using their L. Ron Hubbard study technology. Are they getting kids in to do that? I don't know. All I know is it's bizarre. And if you're out there protesting Scientology in Kansas City, keep an eye on this. Do they come at the same time each day? I don't know. I think we need to know. I think somebody needs to find out. It's weird, right? Yeah, that's right. Rather be in Maui. Me too, by the way. Oh, no. Way too many children, no parents. Yeah. It's it's weird. God pray for those kids. Peter says the village of the damned, which if you don't know, that's a... That's a movie. It's just weird. Michelle saying, is a Delphi school sending them? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is there a Delphi school in that area? There might be. I mean, that might tell us a little bit more about what we need to know about it. But if anyone knows, let me know. Natalie at Scientology. Nope. Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. That is my email. That is my email and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so we are going to jump a little bit into the news that Rabbit broke yesterday at Down the Rabbit Hole News. But I want you guys to know, I'm going to be coming back on here at 12 p.m. Central Time 
with Oh No Nora, and we are going to break this down and break it apart and go, we're going to do a much deeper dive. So know that, but we're going to touch on it right now just to kind of, because, you know, we just got to talk about it. We got to talk about it on the recap. And uh, tell me in the comments if you're catching this on the replay or tell me in the live chat what your thoughts are about this. And again, 12 p.m. Central Time today, I'm going to be doing a video with Ono Nora and we are going to get deeper into this. But let's take a little bit of a look at it now and see what we know. This was news that was broken yesterday by Rabbit on Down the Rabbit Hole News. And it is disturbing. I mean, six ways from Sunday, just just so many ways, in so many ways. So let's just take, let's take a little look at what Rabbit is saying about it. So representing other people. So just think about the fact that this would have put others in jeopardy or it does put others in jeopardy. This was a document that many people were aware about, including Mr. Mike Rinder, which I believe now, I must say allegedly that a lot of the client referrals were coming from that board, the Child USA. It's my understanding that the Jane Doe is also friends with Mike Rinder. So he was aware that this was going on. Let me keep reading, okay? Now, the gist here, let's just kind of touch on this a little bit. The gist of it is that we have an attorney who is on the board of Child USA who was referred many individuals whose stories were featured on Scientology Aftermath on the show who were victims of Scientology. And so this attorney was going to represent them in their case against Scientology. And now it's being exposed that this attorney had an incredibly inappropriate relationship with one of the victims of Scientology who went to him for help, went to him for help and instead was manipulated. And there's receipts on this too. As Rabbit points out in her video, the person who made the complaint was another attorney and they don't just go do these things willy nilly unless they have the actual receipts to show this is what happened. This is, it's huge. And we are, Amy, we are going to diagram it out when I chat with Nora 12 p.m. Central Time. You got to look on your phone at the world clock to tell you what time that is for you. <laughs> it, I do believe that that's, you know what? I even forget. I think it's two hours ahead of West Coast time, but I always forget East Coast time, what that is. The questions, we've got questions like, okay, who knew? When did they know? And what was done to try to protect the victims after this was known? Was he, how many people was this guy representing who were victims of Scientology and who were sharing their story? There are a million questions and a bunch of ways we're going to look at this. Let's see what you guys are saying. I'm going to grab a couple questions and comments here. Uh, let's see, just me. Do you think the Aftermath Foundation is banging their heads now that protesters are promoting SPTV Foundation now? Uh, no idea. No idea. I mean, the Af Aftermath Foundation was being promoted before as well. Um, but I, I honestly can't say. I would just speculate. But I don't know. I don't know, actually. Uh, so, Licitous, I've been fretting over that help sign in the window for three days. It's the nurse and the mom and me. Glad it was finally addressed. Not that it matters. LAPD didn't seem to do much of anything. Not yet, but that's why we need to put more pressure on them and on the authorities there to say, hey, this, this doesn't happen. You know, this isn't just an everyday occurrence. For somebody to take steps to be that obvious about a need for help, is it's got to be bad. It is very serious. And they just got to do more to find out what the deal is and to keep putting pressure on Scientology, including protesters and live streamers. Crank it up. Because if this is happening, this is happening because people know the protesters are out there. And uh, if you know of somebody who's trapped in Scientology or in this organization, you could, you come into contact with somebody. All they got to do is find any one of the protesters out there and say, I need to leave this organization. Can you get me out of here now and leave? And they will help you and connect you with the SPTV Foundation. It, uh, You know they did it because they knew people were out there. 
Someone said in the comments they were worrying about the kid from the other day. Remember, there was a young man who Confident Chris was talking to who said he was not a Scientologist. It appeared that his sister was, and she came out and whisked him away without saying a word. It was super creepy and sus. But uh, he comes to my mind as well. What happened to him? His sister was in the Sea Org. It doesn't seem that he was. That's true, Miss Kim. FBI could get involved if you tell them foreigners are in that building. And they are. And they hold on to their passports. We know this. We know this. It just needs to be kept. Be, be, keep, keep pointing it out. Keep shining a light on it. Do not take the pressure off of Scientology. Fluffer Squirrel UK, is it likely that people are being banished for asking questions? That's two in the last few weeks that have said that to DOA. Um, very possibly, yes, that is one of the things. It depends on if they cannot reprogram you or you will not submit to reprogramming and you will some, you don't care about the threats that they make against you and your family as far as disconnection goes, then very well, that could be part of it that they that just then what they call offloading in the Sea Org and will get rid of the person. Depends on the situation and who they have on the outside that might cause a problem. It's all about damage control for Scientology. That's all that it is about. That's how they look at everything. Maxie, I hope they didn't catch who wrote it, who wrote help. I guarantee you, I'm positive they did because the person who did it was probably in that room. Artax, the stupid horse. I heard many Scientology kids take LSD to avoid going into the Sea Org. That's true. I knew a girl, a young woman when I was in the Sea Org who routed out of the Sea Org and went and did LSD to make sure she could never go back. That's how afraid she was of being brought back. She knew the only thing that would disqualify her would be taking LSD. If you are an under the radar Scientologist and you are watching this now and you are worried about your children or yourself being heavy pressured to go into the C organization, just tell them you did LSD. They don't check. How would they know? They don't test you for it. <laughs> just tell them that you did LSD. You tell a C org member you've done LSD, you cannot be recruited for the C organization. So I want to do a whole video on things to help people under the radar, because when I was under the radar, I didn't fully understand how the e-meter was a scam and how you could trick it as well. Like, I mean, I was aware of a little bit because I was trained how to use it, but I feel like there's more we could do for people who can't fully come out of Scientology, but might need help protecting themselves within Scientology, even understanding what the rules are in Scientology that you can turn against them. We need to do that. Don't let me forget you guys. I want to do a video. I want to do a video about that. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to take a deep dive into this video from Down the Rabbit Hole News. And we're going to do that in just a little bit over an hour here. Where I am, Central Time, it's 10 to 11. We're going to do this at noon. And we are going to do it with Oh No Nora, who she does not pull any punches. She's just going to tell you like it is. And with her background and understanding as well, I think she's going to be able to shed some light. Let's not forget, Oh No Nora also worked on the Aftermath Foundation show with Mike Rinder. So she has a lot of insight and information and a very unique perspective that I want to be able to bring to this and have the conversation with her. So I hope you guys can catch that on the live. If you can't, please catch it on the replay later and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Because, uh, we are going to talk all about it, and I hope to see you guys there. Please hit that like button on your way out and hit that subscribe button, button as well. Truly appreciate your support with all of this. So I'm going to wrap it up, and I'm going to see you guys in just a little bit over an hour. Get out there today and have the most amazing cult-free day. <laughs>